Want to know whether the hype on the new Dora Wings Fairy Delta 2 is worth it? Well, before you rush off to your favoured retailer to get one, be that in the real world or online, why not join me and have a peek in the box to see what you'll get for your money right here on Gary Stuff. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to this peek in the box of the brand new Fairy Delta 2 in 172nd scale from Dora Wings. This kit was sent to me by Dane Stewart and he purchased it from The Model Workshop. If you like the video, you can support the channel for free by giving it a thumbs up on the like button and by subscribing to the channel. Make sure to hit the bell to be notified of all my future content. Links to other ways to support the channel are in the information box below. Let's have a look at the box. Here we have the box of the Fairy Delta 2 from Dora Wings in 172nd scale. Scale is confirmed here and it has a product code of DW72009. Here it says when it's complete the model will be 219 millimeters long. That's you know, 20 centimeters ish or 21 centimeters. That's going to be about 8 inches in old money. And a wingspan of 114 millimeters. The artwork's very beautiful, depicting the FD2 uh, during its attempt on the world airspeed record, which of course it very successfully gained. On the other sides of the boxes, uh, this side the QR code links to the Dora Wings website. There's a one of the alternate schemes, the blue scheme, which is um, the colours that you'll see the FD2 in these days in the museum. I think at Cosford, I believe it is. Model length again here, 65 parts, six pieces of foam to etch, and it, of course it points out the paint and glue are not included. Um, it's designed for people 14 plus years old. That's mainly because of the photo etch. It really shouldn't be anywhere near children up to three years old. Um, they're saying, please recycle the box. The box is completely recyclable, of course. Um, dispose of things regularly. And it's made of polystyrene, which is a group six plastic. So it may be in your area. Do check with your council uh, whether they will recycle group six plastics as well. I know mine does here in West London. On the short end here, there's just a reprise of the artwork and the scale and product codes. And the same on this side. On the other long side, there's just a link to three other, there was pictures of three other of their kits. The Lysander, the Savoy S55A and the Lancer, P43 Lancer. And it points out these kits are made in Ukraine. Let's have a look and see what you get inside the box. Obviously, first of all, you'll notice everything comes in one cellophane bag, which is quite cool. I'm very excited to be looking at this, to be honest. This is a kit I've been I've had my eye on ever since it was announced. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five frames of grey plastic. We'll look at those in more detail in a moment. There's a frame of transparencies. I know that's in there as well. There's the instruction manual. There's some um, photo etch parts, as we've been told. And there's the decal sheet here as well. Let's have a look at all these components in a bit more detail. Okay, so here we have frame A. We have the starboard side of the fuselage, port side of the nose, part of the jet exhaust here. Um, this is probably an elephant or something from the wings, I suspect. And I think a couple of pieces of air inlet. Frame B, corresponding other halves of all of the above, basically, so the port side of the fuselage. Starboard side of the nose, um, an elephant, and the other half of the exhaust 
tube for the engine. Frame C, of course, has the primary wing panels, top and bottom, and there's some moulding on the inside for detail as well. Frame D, we have the cockpit ejection parts for the ejection seat, uh, the remainders of the uh, control uh, controls the elephants for the rear of the wing. I'm guessing some of these are things like um, doors for the undercarriage, that's the rudder, and then the face of the engine inlet here, more parts of the engine inlets as well. Then in frame we have pretty much everything else, uh, the rest of the cockpit detail here, undercarriage parts, wheels, and so on, and all the little sort of inlets and intakes and things like that that clutter up many a 1960s aircraft. If we look at the moulding here, um, we can look around the moulding of the undercarriage bay here. This is all very crisp. These are locating, pairs of locating pins for the gear doors. Uh, we can see the scribing on the panel lines is actually quite shallow by say airfix standards. It's quite um, subtle. So that's going to be interesting to see if we can bring that out. If we can bring those out, this is going to look a really, really, really detailed result, I have to say, and a scale result, which is quite cool. Um, there's a part here for the um, the actuators, for the flaps or elephants, whichever they are. There's also a slot here. This is where the uh, photo etched wing fence goes as well. On the interior side, you can see there's a bit of um, detailing there. There's not going to be a lot of detail on these. These wings were very, very thin. And then when you scale them to 172 and you have to have a certain sort of depth of plastic, um, these details are going to be very, very slender indeed. But they look very clean. And it is a brand new kit, so it is a brand new tool. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be that clean when they arrive, and these absolutely are. Looking at the fuselage detail, again, the panel lines a tiny bit more prominent, I think, on the fuselage, but that's not a bad thing. These are going to be fairly small, and if you see them from a distance, you want a little bit of depth to them. Again, they're not as much as, say, Airfix will use at this scale, but they're nice and straight, nice and clean corners. Um, Hoping it goes together reasonably well because there are quite a lot of things we, we would otherwise need to tidy up. Now, my main concern with this build is going to be this nose section. This probe here is really thin. A, just cutting it off the frame is going to be a challenge. And then B, having that stuck on the plane all the way during the construction and painting and things like that could be a real problem so what i might see because this was designed to droop the nose was designed to droop there's a, a drooping joint here and it is indeed where you put the nose onto the aircraft i wonder if i might be able to do this separately from the rest of the aircraft the nose section and um paint it separately and everything but just to protect this rather than using it when it's on the whole aircraft. I'll have a look later and see whether we can get away with that, but that's what I'm gonna try and do. Again, the, the parts are very cleanly presented, very clean plastic, very homogenous looking plastic. There's no obvious flow lines, no obvious uh, depressions, undercuts anything like that that would suggest this isn't anything but a really very top class mold here we have the um, instrument panel and actually the rudder bars as well rudder pedals there is a decal for this part here i may just do that in black and dry brush it the canopy is going to be closed so yeah, i don't know that it necessarily is going to bring anything more to use the decal and these uh, faces on these instruments are 
reasonably pronounced the, the sort of sinking of them. So it may lead to a bit of an issue with getting the decal set properly anyway, and then matting it down and then glossing out the instruments. I think it'd be better just to uh, black paint the whole thing, dry brush it, do a few sort of spots and bit here there to, to make it look like they're instruments, a few dots of colour here and there, and leave it at that. The undercarriage legs, again, quite complex, spindly little things on the Ferry Delta 2. They have to be to save weight, but they look good. The uh, base of the cockpit looks all right. The only place I've noticed anything other than absolute perfection in, in the moulding is here. These little parts, this is like an, an inlet. That needs to be trimmed. That's got a little bit of flash there. And this, I don't maybe it's part of the undercarriage or something. I don't know where, where this goes. But again, just a little bit of trim around there we have to do. Other than that, none of this has any flash anywhere, which is lovely. I do like it when they only have one injection gate on a wheel because you can paint the wheel on the frame and cut it down, sand it down. That automatically gives you a little bit of a flat spot as well. Um, but that only works if they're not uh, pre-positioned wheels. Um, and they only do that if they've put flat spots in. They have pre-positioned these wheels, but I think with the idea that that's where your flat spot's going, um, they have got a shaped wheel here, wheel hub. That's kind of, yeah, I'll have to see where that leaves me with this um, part here. Normally, normally, and it doesn't don't really look any flatter at all. Normally, you'd have this shaped so that the part where it injects into here would be where the flat spot goes. So when you snip that off and sand it down, that is the flat spot for the wheel anyway. So it's going on the bottom. And then all of the rest of the wheel is, you know, nice and ready to go. But we'll see. We'll see. They are definitely um, shaped, as are the hubs here. You can see this half moon hub here. I will have to have a check. Um, Because that seems to imply to me, let's see the flat spot at the top of the half and then see that that would put the the cut off here up up there, which I prefer it to be down you know here wherever the actual flat spot is. Anyway, I'll have a look at that later when I'm building the thing, but that that could be something that's not really all that nice. Um, my nose leg all very clean and clear, very easy. Uh, the Joystick is very good. Control column, I should say. I don't like calling it a joystick. And the wheels are nicely moulded as well. So, yeah, overall, very well done. This is the obviously the transparent plastic frame for the windshield and the canopy. You'll notice the canopy has got lots of areas marked off. This is because essentially it was a solid canopy with really small window spaces. Uh, Moulding looks good. I can't see any bubbles anywhere in the feed, so that's looking okay. They, the cutoff points are right. That's against the, the bits that actually contact the fuselage, so rather than bits where the parts contact each other, which you don't have to sand down, and you're going to scratch and all that. These are right at the very ends, and that's cool. Um, that's okay. Where do they go? Yeah, they go into the back of the part as well so rather than injecting down onto the part and then having to remove the plastic here this sort of goes into the back of the part and so the part you're removing is, is along here which is going to get hidden anyway so that's nice thoughtful design and um, all looks very good and as if to underline quite how small those patches are on the canopy they do provide paint Mask spray paint masks. You can see these. Some of these are really tiny parts. This is for the windshield, and these are for the canopy here. But a really, really small thing. There is also a very small sheet of photo. Actually, these are the wing fences. Um, I'm really pleased when they put wing fences in as uh, as photo etch because they are very, very thin. 
when we come to make this, we must make sure these bits here and here, when we cut them off, we must make sure we grind them down really well to fit the rest of the contour here because if you leave anything on these joints, then the rest of this isn't going to sit properly on the wing. The super glue is not going to catch properly and it won't fit. So on these wing fences, you really need to pay attention to making sure where you cut them off the frame, they are cleaned up properly afterwards. Very, very important. Uh, the other things here are these um, angle of attack indicators, your indicators. They go in like a cross shape on the front end of the nose probe to give you, you know, sort of your movement, pitch movement, things like that. Here is the decal sheet or decal sheet plus addition. I'm not quite sure. Maybe I don't know whether they forgot to add these two roundels into the set. I'm not sure what went wrong there. Anyway, there they all are. Um, this is for obviously Whiskey Golf 774 as it appeared three times or four times in its career. Uh, black one's going to be for when it was in bare metal or high speed silver. These sort of pale, sort of more primrosey yellow is for um, when it appeared in like a reddish color. And the white is for when it appeared in aircraft blue. Um, the stripes here are for the World SB record attempt as well. Um, they look really nice. They're, they're made by Decograph. They're screen printed and they're screen printed in spot color. So instead of doing your usual four color print, so your black, cyan, magenta and yellow in different amounts, which is how you print things like books and magazines and whatever, they've actually sort of designated individual colors and screen printed them on in registration, which is fantastic. The only thing we need to do, of course, is find out how good the registration is. And that is what I'm about to do now. Firstly, the sharpness. This is our standard half millimeter pencil lead here. You can see very, very, very sharp print indeed. Let's go and have a look at this logo. That's beautiful. That is really, really nicely printed. You can read all of this exceptionally well the instrument panel is up here yeah, as i said i'm not probably not going to use it but it's very keen very sharp looks very nice indeed the actual registration looks fantastic um, there's always the things like this is hood jettison button we've got yellow and black the yellow goes down first and they overprint the black on it and that's where you can see any sort of mismatch of the registration and there's none that's absolutely spot on very very nice indeed very impressed these are not going to be cheap decals for them to have made let me tell you um yeah even with the red um uh, here ejection seat symbols very clean very clear at 172nd these are remarkably lovely and lastly today the instruction leaflet, nicely printed in full color, glossy full color. On the front is the reprise of the box art. On the back is the color callouts in uh, Mr. Hobby, Tamiya, Mig, Hataka and Life Color versions. Um, almost everything is there for all, almost all the manufacturers, which is kind of cool. Symbols here. Um, normally you'd put those inside, but never mind, that's where they are. And then on the inside, we have the frame maps again, um, showing you where all the relevant parts are. We have the instructions themselves, which are, let's start off in full color. I, don't know if they necessarily use full color throughout or if they use spot color reds and things like that. In this part, it's full color anyway. Um, you can see here there's uh, decals for the straps on the seat, which is kind of cool. Um, everything seems to go together very well. You know, the instructions look fine. Those are the um, little alpha probes that we mentioned earlier on the photo etch. You can see how delicate they are. And you can see also why I'm quite keen to make this separately 
to the rest of the aircraft and then keep it safe somewhere and then later on put on these final details and then put it on the aircraft rather than you know be picking it up and knocking bits while I'm actually building it so there's the inlet engine inlets and exhausts and so on and so forth the uh, the nose on this famously the nose could be drooped for um, approach and landing so you could actually see the whole not it wasn't just like the nose on Concorde it was like the whole cabin drooped down essentially um, what how they achieved this is there's this mounting part E14 here that depending on which way around you put it gives you the position of the part so if you put it with the indent there going to the back then it sits as the flight position if you put it with the indent going forward then it sits as the takeoff and landing position which is a nice very neat solution to the problem it also means from looking at this i can definitely do the nose separately which is a massive relief let me tell you and then we have the schemes so the first scheme is march 1956 when peter twist lieutenant commander peter twist oh yes Fleet Air Arm pilot, Peter Twist, not RAF, um, took the aircraft to 1,132 miles per hour, an absolute world airspeed record, beating the previous record by over 300 miles an hour, may I point out, um, with the nice stripes and well, airspeed record thing on that. This is prior to that date during the flight testing procedure in 1955. So this is how it would appear most of the time in its early days. There is then, as it appears at Cosford in Shropshire, um, if you go to the uh, Scale Model World Show in Telford, you have to go to Cosford, the RF Museum at Cosford. It's like 20 minutes away or something. Um, you can see this actual aircraft there. It's a beautiful museum, really, really, really well going. I have to say, on the Friday before Cos, uh, the Tret Telford show, it is full of model makers. So it's quite a cool place to be, actually. So, yeah, do go to Cosford if you can. This last scheme is how it appeared in 1958 at the uh, Farnborough Air Show. Um, this, I will have to go and get do some research on this colour. This looks quite uh, like a... Hang on, so I think I've got like a... What they call it? Oh, great. Vallejo call it red. Okay, but it's not red as we would normally think. It's much more of a sort of uh, carmine, crimsony sort of red. It's not a uh, scarlet red. Um, so that's actually not a bad fit for that colour if you're going to use it. That's uh, 71102 model air. Um, they don't give uh, the rest of them are you know, I haven't got any other reds that will fit that um, they don't give uh, paint colours for the red or the blue because no one seems to make them they give you BS colours and I guess you can look those up and see what's the closest you can find to them but that they call it violet it looked like red to me and that uh, Vallejo matches quite well aircraft blue uh, I don't know, that, that's quite a rich ultramarine blue. So, but again, that's how this is printed. You, you, you would need, ideally, you would need to look up uh, the BS108 colour or 796 colour and look up their equivalents online. I'm sure plenty, plenty of people will have done that research for you already. So that's the instruction booklet. So there it is. If you've enjoyed the video, please let me know by giving it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below and to support the channel at no cost to you make sure you've subscribed thanks very much for watching and i hope to see you again very soon 